Visual Studio Code has a new universal version out, which supports Apple Silicon, which means that if you have an M1 machine, you'll see better performance and improved battery life. Last time we talked about VS Code for Apple Silicon was when they still had the orange icon. Many of you were confused. What is this orange icon? Well, there's no more orange icon. I kind of like the orange icon. Anyway, that seemed ages ago at this point, but really it was only a month and a half ago or so. So let's give a hand to the VS Code team for pulling it together so fast. And this time I also gotta hand it to them, to Microsoft for coming up with a really good name. Universal, not VS Code version 3.5 build 27 mark six. Universal, it's exactly what it is, a universal update, which means that there is one version of the app that'll work on all Macs, no matter what type of chip they run. So besides adding support for Apple Silicon, Universal brings improvements to the timeline view, keyboard navigation for toolbars and tabs, and a bunch of other changes. Today, we're not only gonna look at the new release, but we're actually gonna dig into some metrics and performance auditing. And we're gonna try to uninstall VS Code because it puts sprinkles all over your system. So we're gonna try to undo that as well. And at the end, I'm gonna be picking a raffle winner and we're gonna start a new raffle. So stick around and if you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. There's gonna be a bunch more raffles, a bunch more tech reviews coming up. I got a brand new laptop sitting right next to me. It's a Lenovo with the Core i7 and it's the 11th gen. I did tests with the Dell. Now we're gonna be doing tests with the Lenovo. Same chip, but we'll see how the laptops actually differ. So that's gonna be coming on the channel as well. We're gonna be doing some comparisons there as well. All right, let's get into it. For those of you that remember this one from my last video, you see this little blue icon here? This is the VS Code proper running through Rosetta and I'm gonna click on it and you'll see that this takes quite a bit of time to start up. The last time I think it took 11 seconds. It takes a while, there it is. All right, so this is VS Code running through Rosetta emulation. And while Rosetta does a really good job at running x86 based software, by the way, sometimes even better than my Intel machine. You can check out my other videos for comparisons of different dev tools on the M1 versus Intel. For some reason, VS Code was a beast that just didn't wanna work as quickly at all as evidenced right here. This startup time is not the only issue. Uh, we also had language service slowdowns and things like that, but not anymore, right? Well, in theory, Universal is gonna fix that. So let's put that to the test. I'm gonna close this down and I'm gonna quit the program. And the first thing to do is I'm gonna blow away all my versions of VS Code so I can start from scratch. So let's pop open applications. There's VS Code insiders. I'm gonna drag that to trash. I'm gonna drag these two to trash as well. Okay, hopefully they're in trash now. That's not all, there's other places where you need to clean up after VS Code installation. I'm in my home folder. I'm gonna head over to library. And in library, we have this uh, application support folder. So let's head over there. Okay, now you see this code folder here and code exploration and code insiders. It doesn't say VS Code and code sounds a little bit scary. You don't wanna touch that, but that's actually VS Code. We're gonna delete those folders. All right, I'm doing this for you. I'm gonna take this risk. RMRF code, why is exploration not popping up? Let's uh, copy that. Ah, it didn't do it. Okay, these are tough folders to delete. Let's do that manually and move the insiders one to trash as well. Let's back up to the library level. Let's go to caches. And in here we have com.microsoft.vscode. See all these VS Code folders? We're gonna delete this stuff, okay? So move to trash. And let's check one more place. We're in library. I'm gonna go to saved application state and Microsoft VS Code. Let's make sure that's the right stuff. It is. I have three of them because I had three different versions installed here. So I'm gonna delete all of them. Hopefully that takes care of it. Okay, now I'm gonna go to Google, search for VS Code. Kind of like I'm setting up a new machine. And look at that, there it is. This will automatically detect what you're running on. It detects that you're on a Mac and it gives you this option to download Mac Universal Stable Build. Notice that you also have the ability to do the Stable Build or Insiders here if you do the dropdown. I just want the Stable Build because that's what I want to try. They don't give you the option to download separate builds anymore for x86 or ARM processors. Everything is together in this one Universal package. 
So I'm gonna click on this big button and it's gonna download that zip file. Now I did notice that that file is bigger because they have to package those platforms together in one file, but it's just a, an installation, so it doesn't matter. You're gonna probably delete it anyway. So I've unzipped that and I get something called Visual Studio Code 2. I'm gonna drag that over here to my dock and the moment of truth, I'm gonna click on that icon and let's see how long it takes. Get your timers out, ready, click. Visual Studio Code 2 is an application downloaded from the internet. Are you sure you wanna open it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, let's try that. Okay, so that was pretty fast. Let me close everything out again and try it again so we don't have that permission dialog. Click and boom, I like that. That is a great improvement. So no more orange icon, feeling kind of sad about that. Really like that orange icon. I thought it was a good direction, but we take what we got and I'm just happy that this is now opening up quickly. Now, it says welcome to GitLens, which means that unfortunately my extensions are still there. I don't know where it puts stuff, folks. I thought I deleted everything, but apparently there's more places where VS Code spreads its roots. If you know, by the way, what I'm missing, let me know down in the comments below, please. All right, so these are the installed inst extensions and this may actually contribute to startup time as well. Even though I had all these extensions turned on and installed, still we had a pretty quick startup time that I'm happy with. One more thing I'd like to test is the code command line. Now on Intel Macs, on x86 Macs, when you install VS Code, it automatically adds a terminal extension, a command line extension, so you can just use the code command to open up the editor. So let's see if that is actually the case. I'm gonna go to my .NET directory and go to my hello project. Let's just see if this works. Code dot Ah, command not found code. Okay, folks, so it did not automatically install that extension. But there is a way to install that. And I'm gonna go to VS Code. I'm just gonna open it up the old fashioned way. Press Command P, and then greater than sign. And you can type in shell command. And if you just type in the word shell, you'll see these two options. You can install the code command in path or uninstall it. I'm gonna choose the first option there. And it says code successfully installed in path. So let's test it out. I'm gonna close everything out here and very nice, it works. Now, I did mention that I was trying to get rid of all the extensions to see how this worked without them, but since we do have the extensions installed and some of them might be running, like you've just seen, let's see how we can view the extensions and what the running extensions are. You can use that same command P and then greater than sign. And here you can access the developer menu. So type in developer and look at all the different options you have here. Inspect key mappings, layout, measure extension host latency. That's a useful one. Reload web views, reload window, reload with extensions disabled. A nice little feature for debugging or troubleshooting to see if an extension might be causing a slowdown in your performance of VS Code. And restart extension host. This is a good one if um, an extension is giving you trouble, you can just reboot all the extensions. Ah, here's one, show running extensions. Let's try that one out. So these are the currently running extensions. And look at this, it shows their time right here. So 287 milliseconds, live server is noticeable. I'd say that's a quarter of a second that you have to wait. And all these will add up. Get 40 milliseconds, you probably won't notice that. So a lot of these you won't notice right off the bat, especially like merge conflict, two milliseconds, no debug auto touch, one millisecond. A lot of these you won't notice, but if you have a lot of extensions, I don't, but you might, you can come here and check it out to see how long they take. Let's close that out. And there's one more thing we wanna check out. Let's go to developer again. Let's check out startup performance. All right, this report right here will give you some information that's pretty useful about your startup time, system memory, how much free space you have, and a trace of all the different steps during startup. 
me make this a little smaller so we can fit more stuff in. And by the way, I wanna mention that these results here are specific to the project that I opened. So you might have different extensions that are operating on that project that you have. And if you open up a project, you'll see this report based on that project that you're working with. Do you have favorite extensions that you use all the time with VS Code? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm really curious to check out more extensions. I don't feel I use enough of them out there in the ecosystem. There's some really cool stuff that people are building and I'd like to know about them. And I'm sure other people watching this video would also benefit if they're good extensions. Let me know. Since we're watching this here, you can see that these eager ones up at the top, they say true. These are the ones that are gonna load right away. And the other ones are gonna load lazily. Um, so these first few, the ones that are eager are going to take up the longest amount of time. So you can see that the finish activate right here, that's the longest ones. So five, almost five seconds for that .NET Tools C Sharp one because it's specific to my project and I opened a C Sharp project. And you can keep going with this report, dig into it a little further, and there's a ton of information presented here, including the locations of the cached data that these extensions work with. Now, if you really wanna dig into it even deeper, and if you wanna get into the internals of VS Code and the extensions and the running stuff behind the scenes, I haven't dug into it yet, but some of you might. You can go to Help Toggle Developer Tools. Does this look familiar to you? For those of you that are web folks might recognize this right away. These look like Chrome Developer Tools and this will let you take a look at the running code behind the scenes, the stuff that actually runs VS Code. You can go to this little three dot menu here, more tools, and then JavaScript profiler. This will show you the JavaScript VM instance that's running. You can start profiling by clicking the start button. This will record uh, while you're doing stuff or while VS Code is running. It'll record a profile and then you can hit the stop button here and take a look at the details here what's happening, when it's happening, all the different events that are being triggered by different extensions. A lot of you might not even need to get into the weeds of these things like that, but that's available for you. Let's take a look at one more thing, and that's if you already have Visual Studio Code running, you can go to the terminal and say code dash dash status. And this will give you current information with the VS Code instance that you've opened, and that workspace that you have open. So this will give you some other data about what's happening with that process. So take a look at that, the OS version, the memory, the status, what's happening with the process and so on. Now, if you want me to dig deeper into all this, let me know down in the comments. I may do a follow-up video doing even deeper deep dive into it. <laughs> <laughs> deeper deep dive. So that's VS Code on the M1 Apple machine. I'd say they did a good job fixing it up. All right, now it's time to pick the winner from the last raffle. And it's this video right here where I do a node side-by-side -side comparison of performance. And let's see, I need the URL for this. So I'm gonna copy that. Let's go to the random comment picker and I'm gonna paste in my URL of the video right here. We're not gonna filter duplicate users. So if you have multiple comments, that's fine. Get YouTube comments, 246 comments. You folks have really been commenting. Thank you for that. All right, here we go. Are you ready? We're gonna click the start now button and see an ad. Wrong button, Alex. Let's click this button right here, the start button. All right, come on, come on, come on. Fyodor Kostinchenko, his comment was great stuff. Okay, and it looks like Fyodor is a subscriber. So Fyodor, congratulations, you won. What'd you win? You won a copy of Parallels. Congratulations, Fyodor, I'll get in touch with you. Now you have a chance of winning another copy of Parallels, which I'm gonna be giving away in two weeks from now based on the comments in this video. So leave a comment down below. The rules are pretty simple, the comment, you have to have a like and you have to be a subscriber to this channel. Good luck, folks. Thanks for watching again, and I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.